there are a lot of people, right? You know this is true. A lot of people who were super happy at the calendar year clicking into 2021, right? They could not wait for the start of this new year because they didn't want anything more to do with 2020. For instance, do you recognize her? Lori Laughlin, so used to be a very famous actress on lots of TV shows, and then it was discovered that she and her husband had paid $500,000 to buy entrance into a college for her daughter. They'd lied, they'd bribed their way to get their daughter into school. Now the reality, of course, is the kid was smart and talented. She, got, she, she could have gone to about 98% of all the colleges on the planet if she'd have just applied. But they wanted her in this prestigious one, so they paid all this money to get her in where they wanted, and then they got caught. And she, she got fired from her TV shows. He lost clients and business. They both went to prison. She went to prison for two months. He's still in prison. Headed to prison for five months for him. Pay huge fines. They are going to be in trouble for a very long time. I mean, the damage their reputation, the damage their pocketbook, is just so significant. There are a lot of people who could not wait for 2021 to come because of what 2020 brought them. I mean, isn't it true, and, and maybe for some of you these statements are true, there are a lot of people who January uh, one year ago, they were better off financially than they are now today, one year later. Isn't that true? A lot of people. There are a lot of people who a year uh, ago, their, their relationships were stronger than they are now. I mean, you all know how much COVID affected a lot of relationships. It's, it, and what it did is really, of course, just bring to light problems that were already there. But if you can go away from each other for 40, 50 hours a week working and then come back, it's easier to be <laughs> together that shorter time. But when you have to be with each other all the time, all of a sudden problems that were underlying were now in front of you all the time. And so a lot of relationships were better off a year ago than they are today. A lot of people spiritually were a lot closer to God a year ago than they are today because people just stopped going to church and then they stopped watch, watching worship services online. They stopped pursuing the purposes of God because COVID interrupted everything. And so the consequence is there are a lot of people, and maybe you are today, maybe you as you sit here today are saying, I, I wish my life was going better in some areas. I mean, is that what you'd be saying today? I mean, if you were being really honest, it's like, yeah, I wish things were a little bit better in this area of relationships or in finances or my career. I wish things were better in my parenting relationships. I wish things were a little better. And you may be asking the question that so many are, who are asking it today, saying, why isn't my life going better than what I thought it would be? Well, the Bible has an answer for that. The Bible says that fun, almost... I can't say all the time, but the majority of the time, our lives, the outcomes of our lives are directly related to the choices that we make. The outcome of our lives, what you're experiencing today as you sit here, no matter where you are and what time you're watching this, the outcome of your life is the product of the choices that you've made to bring you to this point. Matter of fact, if you were summing it up, it would be a sentence like this. God would say in the Bible that direction determines destination. So it's, I know that some of you are a little bit um, geographically challenged, so this may be a hard illustration to catch because some of you don't even know which way north, south, east, and west is, so I get that. Some of you don't know right from left. I understand that. I, but, you know, I've seen that all my life. Some people have, you tell them to turn right and they <laughs> turn left and they don't even know. So I get this. So hang with me here. Let's say that you decide, though, that you really want to go to Chicago and your GPS is broken. So you go to Madison and you get on 94. Because Highway 94 will take you to Chicago. But instead of going east on 94, you go west. You sincerely believe that you are on the right road to Chicago, but you are on the right road to Minneapolis. You are not ever going to get to Chicago by going west on 94 from Madison. Ever. I don't care how fast or slow you go. I don't care how sincerely you believe that you are headed in the right direction, right? Direction determines destination, and that's what the Bible teaches. Where you are aiming and the paths that you are on are bringing you somewhere. So if you're sitting here today and you're like, I don't like some of the paths in my life, I don't like some of the outcomes of my life, then part of what God would say is, you need to pull back for a minute and examine the paths that you're on. 
Because direction is determining where you're ending up. If you're ending up somewhere you don't like, then God would say, pull back for a little bit, do a little self-examination, and see if you're really on the right paths. And so part of what we're doing in this series with Great Expectations is I want you to think about what God may have for you in 2021, and this message ties in so well. So we're starting this new series today called Great Expectations, and I want to talk to you about harnessing the power of our paths because this is kind of, in my mind, like the foundation for where everything we're going to talk about in this series starts from. So I want to ask you to open your program. I want to ask you to take your notes out and grab a pen. And of course, welcome to those of you who joined us this morning on YouTube, or to those of you who joined us on our website at penielchurchlife.com. We're glad you're with us. You have these same notes if you want to grab them. So let's go into this today. And I only want to say two things about this. And the first point, I'm going to give you kind of the cliff notes of it, because I really want to get to the second point. So the first thing I want you to understand today is I really want you to understand just how important your paths actually are. Because some of you don't, un you're underestimating the power of paths. And I want you to walk out here very clear about the power of your paths. The interesting thing is once you understand this concept, you see examples of it every single day. If you watch the news, if you read the paper, there are examples of paths impacting people's lives every single day. And once you learn this language, you'll start to understand it. For instance, did you watch the Netflix series last year about Joe Exotic and the Tiger King? Or so some of you, some of you saw this, some of you didn't. So it's, I, there's no way I can sum up the craziness of this guy's life. But it, if you watch on Netflix, it's highly entertaining. Um, he used to run this thing where he had all these you know, tigers, as you can see, and people would come and they'd pay money. And then he got into this kind of like this battle with this woman named Carol Baskins, and it got really ugly. And today, the, the Tiger King is here in prison. This is where he is. You can go visit him in prison because he got busted in a murder for a hire plot trying to kill Carol. It, it's unbelievable. If you've never watched this Netflix series, this is incredible. Now, there's no point in Joe's life where he woke up and thought, you know what, I, I can't wait to go to prison someday. I'm just so excited about prison. When he was five years old, it wasn't like astronaut, Tiger King, prisoner. It was, prisoner was never on the plan. But if all of us could get in a time machine and we can go back in time and, and watch the decisions that he made, he made decisions that were always going to lead a very specific, in a very specific direction. I mean, he's in prison today because of the choices he made. Now, he will tell you that he's framed, and he's innocent, he's a victim of all this, and he'll tell you that from, from here to kingdom come. But the reality is, destination determines direction. And if you're going to put your feet on that path and go in that direction, you're going to end up there. Now, again, he'd say, well, I never meant to wind up there. Oh, oh who cares? If you haven't learned this in life, you need to learn this now. Your intentions really are irrelevant when it comes to your future. They are irrelevant. Choices matter most. The person driving on 94, headed west, getting to Minneapolis goes, well, I didn't mean to go to Minneapolis. Who cares what you meant? It doesn't matter what you meant to do. All that matters is what you did do. When it comes to your future in life and what you're experiencing right now and what you're going to experience one year from now and five years from now and ten years from now, your intentions, you may be well-intentioned, but it doesn't matter. Your intentions don't count. What counts is your direction. It's really important that you understand that this is what the Bible teaches. It's intentions that are really most relevant. So the Bible would say several things about paths. So here, here they are. First, everyone is on multiple paths, the Bible teaches. You have multiple paths in your life. You're not just on one path. Your life is the sum of multiple paths. You see that in the Bible in different places. In Psalm 17:5. It says, my steps have held to your paths, plural. You have multiple paths. You are on all kinds of paths, actually. You are on financial paths and spiritual paths and career paths and relationship paths and mental and paths and physical and health. I mean, all of these things, marriage and relationship. I could put so many others. I just put a few. There's just a few. You are on a lot of paths today. And they're all, and so understanding that, then the Bible would say every path is leading you somewhere. 
Every path you're on is taking you somewhere. If you get on 94 and you start heading west, it's going to take you somewhere. And where you end up will be where you're aimed. You're aimed west, so you're going to end up in Minneapolis. That's where you're going to be. Doesn't matter where you wanted to go, it matters where you go. The choices you make matter. Every path, this is why the Bible is, if you've ever read in the Bible, there are places in the Bible where he practically begs us to reconsider the paths that we're on. Take a look at this verse. My son, he said, do not go along with them. And he's talking about evil people. Do not set foot on their paths. And he's practically begging people reading this verse. Please don't do this. Please don't put your foot. So you got these evil people, they're going on this path and they're begging you to come with. And he's begging his son, please don't put your foot on their path. Why? Because the moment you get on that path, that path is heading somewhere. It's going to take you somewhere. It took Joe Exotic somewhere. He didn't want to go there. Doesn't matter. You put your foot on that path, it will take you somewhere. You get on 94 and you head west, it's going to take you somewhere. Your on many paths, and all of your paths are taking you somewhere. All of them. And then the Bible would say this. Oh, by the way, uh, think about this. Isn't it true one year from now, isn't it true one year from now, there will be people who will have gotten pregnant this year and they'll be all alone raising a child. Isn't that true? That's not an extreme statement. With the proliferation of sexually transmitted diseases, one year from now there will be people all over America who have a new STD. One year from now, there will be people who are divorced, broke, lonely, apart from God, right? Isn't that, there's nothing controversial about that. Isn't that true? You hope it's not you, you hope it's not your kids. But isn't it also true that one year from now, there will be people who will be closer to God? And they will have career success like they've never known. And they'll be debt free and they'll be emotionally healthier and they'll be, have a closer marriage and they will be feeling content. Isn't that true? Nothing controversial on either of those. Do you know what will determine which list you get? The choices you make. The choices you make will determine which list you get. If you want that list, then get on Highway 94 and head east. You gotta go in the direction that's going to bring you to that destination, right? This makes sense? It's not gonna happen accidentally. Just like all of these are the product of choices. All of these are the product of choices. Every path you're on is bringing you somewhere. And then the Bible says this, you have to take responsibility for your past. And I put this in personal language because I wanted it for me too. I must take responsibility for my paths. The most dangerous, dangerous mindset I see in America is the victimization of America. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's blaming someone else for the outcome of their lives, right? Joe is sitting in prison today telling everybody to listen that it's Carol's fault, it's everybody else's fault, it's not his fault. Here's the problem with that. Blame always makes you powerless. Always makes you powerless. You give your power up to change your life the moment you start blaming someone. You give your power up to, to change your life and make it better. So if it's your mom's fault, and it's your dad's fault, and it's that awful spouse you used to have, and if it's your boss's fault, and it's everybody else's fault, then you can never move forward because you've given all your power away. And God says, no, you take responsibility for what you can. Now here's the truth, you didn't choose every path you're on in life, right? You didn't choose that. If you were raised in an abusive household, if you were raised by an alcoholic mom or dad, you didn't choose those paths. You have outcomes because of what you've suffered through. You didn't choose that path, but here's what God wants you to know. You didn't choose that initial path, but, but, but here is what God says. I always choose what steps I take next. I do. I don't always choose what people do to me, but there's a point at which it now becomes my responsibility. Isn't it true there's some people who live in the past? Do you know anyone in your life who is so bitter all they talk about is what happened and what happened and what happened and what happened? Do you know anyone like that? All they do is live in the past. It's always about what so-and-so did to them, what so -and -so, they never move on. They never take responsibility. I'm not saying that you chose every path, but once you're on a path and it's headed the wrong direction and you become aware of it, now it is your responsibility. Now you choose. 
And there are plenty of people who choose wrong. They choose to just play the blame card and the victim card and the, and I have no control card. And the, none of those things are true. Once you become aware you're on the wrong path, once you find out, hey, that sign says Minneapolis, I want to go to Chicago. Once you see it, it's now yours. And you are not powerless. God has not made you powerless. You have a choice. So what do you do if you're on the way to Minneapolis and you want to go to Chicago? What do you do? Well, that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of the message. Change paths. When they're not taking you where you want to go, when you are not going in the direction that you want to go in your life, stop blaming anybody else. Well, my teachers were really bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. We all get that. We've all had bad teachers. Well, my parents were really bad. My whatever was really bad. I was abused. I, I get, and I'm not downplaying abuse at all as someone who was abused. I get this. But at some point now, it's yours. At some point, this path is yours. And you have to take responsibility and you have to choose. This destination is not where I want to go. I need to own it. And again, let me just show you again. You are always seeing examples of paths, positive and negative. So I wanted to give you a positive example. Have you ever heard of uh, Rebel Wilson? You ever see her as an actress? You ever see this movie, Pitch Perfect? I've never, never seen it. I, I've seen her in some movies. She's really funny. In 2020, she declared it to be her year of health. Did you know about this? Have you heard about this? She made a declaration on Instagram where she has all these millions of followers, and she said, this is my year of health. And she put her goal out there so that everyone would know, and she would be held accountable, basically. So it's like, I'm here. I want to go here. I want to be healthy. And she began to take steps on a new path that has resulted in a real transformation for her. Matter of fact, it's kind of fun to read as I was prepping this message. I'd heard about the story, so then I looked it up and started reading about it. On one of her uh, posts that she put out there, she was on top of a hilltop in a superhero pose. And she said, happy Sunday, everyone. I'm gearing up for a great week ahead. It's going to be super busy, but I got up early this last week three times and went on a hike. Matter of fact, I even did a couple of hundred meter sprints to get the heart rate even higher, although my sprint is probably someone else's slow jog. And she just keeps talking about this and talking about this. My year of getting healthy, my year of getting healthy. She said, I feel so proud. She said, I am only, and this was in October, I'm only six pounds away from my health weight in 2020. She said this, even if you have to crawl toward your goal, keep going. It'll be worth it. I know some days are frustrating. You feel like giving up, you get annoyed at the lack of progress, but good things are coming your way. Couldn't say it better. Could not say it better. Even if you have to crawl toward the destination, it's still better than standing still or going the wrong way. So, you're on the wrong path. You want to change paths, what do you do? Three questions you have to answer. First, you have to answer, where am I actually headed? And it sounds like an easy question, and it is incredibly hard to ask, answer this question honestly. Where am I headed? So if you flip your notes over on the back, I put all these different paths again, and you can just see some of them. This is not, again, exclusive. There are many other paths that you are on. But let's just talk about that first one. It says financial path, for those of you who don't have your notes open. So first one, financial path. Um, where, is the, where is this path taking you in life right now? Where's your financial path taking you in life? Isn't it true that there are some people who, in tw by the end of 2021, their financial pay path is going to leave them broke, no savings, lots of debt, and completely stressed out? And couldn't I put up here divorce? Do you know it's the number one conflict source in marriage? Do you know that? Money fights, number one. Massive amount of divorces ever you happen because couples aren't on the same page financially. Is, that's not controversial, right? One year from now, that will be somebody's future, lots of somebody's in America. But isn't it also true that for some people, uh, their financial path is going to bring them this, no stress. They're going to be debt-free by the end of this year. They're going to be people who have paid off all their debt by the end of this year. They're going to be people who have all of, uh, six months of, a, of, of their total take-home pay in an emergency fund that they never touch. And if their transmission goes out this year, they aren't going to have an emergency because they got that. They won't like spending it, but they won't have an emergency. Isn't that true? There will be people who have who have adequately saved for retirement by the end of the year. There are going to be people who live with such financial peace. Isn't that true? 
Nothing controversial here. You have both paths set in front of you, and the determining factor will be the choices you make. The choices you make will bring you one path or the other. The choices you make will bring you one path or the other. So here's the problem. If I were to ask you where you're headed, it starts with honesty. Years and years ago, if you'd have come to me and said, Brian, how, if you were grading yourself on just the financial path, how do, what grade would you give yourself? I honestly would have said, you know what, pretty financially knowledgeable, read some books on this, doing okay, I'd probably give myself about a B plus in the financial area. This path, pretty knowledgeable, pretty good, B plus. And then I took Financial Peace University, a course that I have talked about so many times. I've personally taken four times just to reinforce the values and help others find financial peace. You can take it online. If you've never taken this and this is your need, take the course. You will not regret it. So I got on, so when I took that course, if you'd asked me after Financial Peace University what I, my actual grade was, D minus, minus, minus. Only one positive thing was I doing and that kept me from being an absolute F in personal finance. And I didn't even know it. I thought I was like a B plus. Yeah, pretty good, B plus. And then I get instruction and I realize I, I'm, I'm a D minus. I'm doing almost everything wrong. That's the hardest thing. That scares me actually if I'm being honest with you. That makes me scared how easy it is for us to lie to ourselves about how good we're actually doing. That scares me. So God built this amazing thing into our lives. It's called pain. Pay attention to pain. Because pain is the indicator light in your life that God wants you to move in a new direction. Pain is the indicator. It's what he uses most in my life to say, hey Brian, it's time to change directions. Pay attention to your pain. Because isn't it true that some of you, your honest answer is, I'm, I'm in pain financially. Isn't that true? How many Americans would say that today? So many are in pain financially. So many would say, honestly, I'm lonely in my marriage. That, that's a sad one. And tons and tons of couples would say that. And there are many, many Americans who'd say, I'm not very healthy emotionally. I became aware of that when I was 30 years old. I became aware that I, this one was mine. 30 years old. I, I was, my grandma Ruby died. And my grandma was just the epitome of grandmas. Perfect, wonderful, lovely lady. Just could not love her more. And she died, and I was 30 years old when I, when I actually conducted part of her funeral. And I never cried. I never felt anything. The reality was, in that moment, I became aware of the fact that I was really broken. I was 30 years old. I knew that was really bad. From 30 on, I knew I was emotionally damaged. And you know what I did about it? Nothing. If you ignore the pain in your life, you will pay a price later. I promise you, and the price can be staggering. If you ignore reality, and the direction you're headed, and the pain that God allows you to see, then you can pay an awful price. Some of you would be honest and say, my career isn't providing for me. It doesn't satisfy me. I don't feel any closer to God, right? These are just honest statements. The pain in your life would just say, pay attention to that pain. It's indicating where you're at and it's helping you to see where you're headed. And then the second question, is where do I want to go? So if this is where I'm at, I'm in Minneapolis now. Where do I want to go? I want to go to Chicago. Where do you want to go? The Bible would say this in Proverbs 23, be wise, have enough sense to follow the right path. By the way, that's exclusive, isn't it? The right path means there's a wrong path, right? 
There are right paths forward financially and there are wrong paths. There are right paths forward relationally and wrong paths. There are right paths forward spiritually and wrong paths that will not bring you what you want. So you've got to think about, here's where I'm at. This is the reality of where I'm at today, and here's where I want to go. And that's where goal setting comes in. Now, I know some of you just have like an internal uh, reaction when the word goal is said. I'm sorry. Okay, I know that this is really hard. I know the statistics about Americans and goal setting. Most Americans don't set goals, and then a bunch of them set goals because they hear pastors like me talk about the importance of goal setting, and they set goals that they keep for about three weeks, maybe, and then they forget about them. I mean, if I were to ask you and don't respond, how many of you achieved your goals in 2020? Some of you are like, I didn't set any. Some of you are like, I didn't achieve any. Some of you are like, I want to leave now because I don't want to talk about goals. And so much of the failure that I see with goals, I've been setting goals in my life that I achieve for 20 years because there are certain things that people do wrong. If you leave these parts out, you won't achieve your goals. Goals will make you feel guilty and bad. And I don't want that for you. I want you to achieve your goals. So you set goals. So some of your goals could be simple. They could be lose 10 pounds, learn how to have a healthy fight with my spouse. Some of you don't know how to have healthy conflict, right? Isn't that true? Some of you have conflict, but it ain't healthy. So that would be a good goal. Some of you, you want to finish your degree, start a new hobby, pay off half your debt. I mean, I could have put so many things on. So many things that are really good goals. If you Google it, uh, if you Google goals for the next year, there are so many ideas out there. So you're like, here's where I'm at and I need help in the area of my finances. So what goals should I set for this year? And then you find ideas and you set the goal, but here's the key. The first reason why goals fail is because they don't do this. They don't make it heartfelt. You have to care about your goals. Some of you put down goals and you fail at them because you don't actually care. You know you're supposed to put down a health goal, but you don't actually care about it. You will never achieve a goal that you don't care about. So don't put down goals that you think other people want you to set. Only put down goals that you care about. Because that's the only way you're going to achieve your goals. Do you actually care about it? You're going to make it heartfelt. So many of you know that I, have, uh, I made a terrible mistake back in 1991. I was a senior in college, and I got offered to, to pastor a church in Madison, and I left before my senior year, before finishing my senior year. So I never finished my college degree. It, it's a decision I've regretted since 1991. I have regretted that I don't even know how many times. Because in America today, many times education is tied to job opportunities and advancement and promotion and income. And, and oppor you just don't even get opportunities sometimes if you don't even have that little piece of paper. And I've been so frustrated about it. And so for years I've wanted to finish it. And then in September of 2019, I restarted again. I started up my, I was 49 years old when I finally went back to school. And I am now, it's been a year and a half in school. And I've been working so hard at it. And this is the year I finish. And I'm telling you right now, it is the most heartfelt goal I have on my list for 2021. My goals are done. I've got them. And this is number one. 2020, I graduate from college. I correct a mistake from 1991. It's only from, so I started in 1988. I graduated in 2021. That's how long it took me to get through school. Okay? I'm so passionate about it. I'm so passionate about it. I can't wait for it. Now, some of you, like, this is like the most disgusting thing you've ever heard. You have no interest in it. Then don't put it down. It's not for you, but it is for me. Can you even see how excited I am? I mean, and it is incredibly hard. I'm going to work a full-time job, a part-time job, and I'm a full-time college student. This is incredibly hard to do. And yet, I'm doing it because I care so much about it. If you don't care, don't you dare put it down because you're guaranteed failure. And if you don't care about something you should care about, that's a problem. You've got to figure out why you don't care about it. So some of you should care about some of the things that you should be setting goals on. You've got to figure that out. 
So that's the first thing. And then the second thing that I've learned about this is you've got to feed it. Feed what you want. So one of the ideas, and I don't have any time to really teach on this today, but feed what you want. So once you're like, this is what I really want, and you're passionate about it, you got to do something that keeps that passion white hot in front of you. So a lot of people recommend making a vision board where you can see yourself achieving your goals. So I did this last year. I have a picture on my computer screen at, at my uh, work, and it's a picture of a person walking across the stage being handed their degree. Whew. That's going to be me. So feed it. Find a way to feed what you want. If it's a marriage goal, Google it. Couples, goals. And there are all kinds of ideas. And pick a goal together that you want to work on together as a couple. And then find a way to visualize that so you can feed it all year long. Won't it be great when we have this together? When we're doing this together? When we're achieving this together? Won't that be great? And feed it. So again, you start with, here's where I'm at, here's where I want to go, and then you ask my, yourself the question, okay, so what are the steps I need to take to get on this new path? What are the steps I take? And if you blow it, that, I mean, here's, people fall apart all the time on this one because they don't actually say, what are the steps I need to take? They get a goal, they're really passionate about it, but how are you going to accomplish it? If you don't write those steps out and make a plan, you'll never accomplish it. People don't accidentally fall into good habits. You've got to figure out what are the habits you're going to add to your life that are going to make this, make this path a reality for you. So one of my favorite verses in the Bible is this. Isn't this, this, is, this is the story of America today. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. So you know what this means? It's like after church is over, go stand in the middle of the, high, in the, middle of the road. And eventually a car is going to come along. And you're going to see that car come around the corner 55 miles an hour, and you're standing in the middle of the road, and you see that thing coming, racing towards you. A wise person gets out of the road. A fool stands in the road and says, this is going to really hurt. Right? That's what a fool does. Americans are so foolish. I gotta, I'm just being honest, and I was foolish too. I, I've been foolish many, many times in my life. Standing in the road, I mean, do you know how foolish it was at the age of 30 to realize how screwed up I was and do absolutely nothing? That's me. And when that car hit, by the way, it was devastating. It really, really almost took me out. Do not be me. Do not be the person standing in the road seeing Areas where your life isn't turning out like you want it to and do absolutely nothing. Do not do that. You cannot imagine the pain that's coming your way. Don't do that. So the two questions on this one are right on your notes. So first, what's my plan to get where I want to go? You need a plan. And you need a plan because sometimes you put the wrong steps in and if your plan isn't working, you can adjust the plan. What's my plan? 2019 was a year when I really started setting big goals for myself, and one of the goals <laughs> was in the area of debt, because I know better. I, I, took four, I took FPU four times, Financial Peace University. I knew that debt was bad, don't do it, and I started to kind of be a little bit dumb with debt. I accumulated some for no good reason, and then I just was doing the financially savvy thing where every 12 months I'd roll it onto a new interest-free credit card. So I was never paying interest, I was never paying payments, I was just kind of floating this debt along. Yeah, that's never going to catch up with you, right? Nothing bad down that path, right? So in 2019, I'm like, enough. Uh, that's a path, and it's going to lead me somewhere I don't want to go, and I know how to solve it. And I'm changing my path. I'm getting on a path that's going to lead me to debt freedom. And so in 2019, I set a goal. I want to be debt free. I knew I couldn't do it in 2019, so it was going to take me longer than that. So, the first, so I had a plan. First, I had to actually care about it. I had to actually care about being debt free. That's the problem with so many people. They don't care. Debt's a toy. Debt's a tool. Debt's no big deal. But I don't view debt that way, personally. Again, that's just my own personal view of it. I wanted, to, I had to want to be debt free. Remember, if you don't care about it, you won't do it. But I cared about it. So then I updated my budget. And I redid my budget so that I could double and then triple my debt payments. Well, which was better than nothing, because I was just paying nothing. 
I was just floating along. So at first I started paying something. Then I started doubling it. Then I started tripling it. And if I would get a bonus at work, I would apply my bonus to it. And my plan was that by July of last year, I was going to be debt free. And then unexpectedly, I got a bonus that I wasn't anticipating. And last March, I achieved the goal. Last March, I paid off my debt. So when I was standing here last year doing this message, I was still in debt. When I stand here today in 2021, I am debt free. I'm debt free. And it's so much nicer to let myself keep all the interest on my money rather than give it to bankers to keep all the interest on my money. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was, I mean, I care about it. I don't ever want to be back in debt again. I never want to be back in debt again. So you set a goal. You set a debt. Here's what I want. So some of you, that's your debt. That's your goal. You want to be debt free. It's one of your two. Don't try and set too many. Just set two or three. This may be one of them. And there's a plan you can follow. And you follow those action steps. And then that you answer this question. Who will I report to? Now this is where people fail again. The Bible just makes it so clear that you and I need each other. If you treat other people as optional in your life, you will never accomplish the success levels that you are capable of. You will never be the person God put you on here on earth alone. God made it so clear in the opening chapters of Genesis that when man was alone, that was a bad thing. And we all know that. Leave men alone, that's a bad thing. Men need help. And so do women, right? But I mean, the opening chapters of the Bible is very clear. Men need help. I need help. So a couple of years ago, when I, when I started getting serious about goals, one of the best things I did, and I, and I wasn't strategic about this, okay? This was just kind of happened. So now I'm telling you about something really cool that happened. But I didn't know it was going to happen. So about three years ago, I asked my friend Matt if he would be my accountability partner, which basically meant I said, I want to set goals, I want you to set goals, and we'll just share, share our ideas during the year on how we're doing on our goals. We had no idea what this was going to look like. We had no formal plan in place. And so the first year was kind of messy. I wrote my goals, he wrote his goals, and then we were like, we're going to touch base every week. We're going to call each other, we're going to... Yeah, right, that didn't happen. And then it kind of changed over the years, and then last year we fell into this really good habit where a couple of times a month, we share our goals with each other, like I just sent my goals off to Matt. Matt has my goals, so he'll send me his goals once he's done writing them. And then every couple of weeks, we just send a single line update under each of our goals. And it's, it's so simple to keep up with. Well, here's one of my goals. So one of my goals is complete the final 11 classes for my degree. I will, and excitement, you have to care about your goals. Why do I care about this? Because I get to graduate. So here's my plan. I got my plan, four in winter, which we're in the middle of now, four in spring, and three in summer, and I'm done. So what I do then is I just send, this is projected into the next year, this is what my summary will look like. January 10th, hey, for this one, I'm done with all my homework for the winter semester. By the way, I'm done with all my homework for the winter semester. So that one's actually true already. January 24th, I won't have anything to write because I'll be still in the middle of the semester, still on track. See how simple this is? It's not a lot. You don't write a lot. It's very simple, very short, and you don't do it every day. I don't even do it every week. Sometimes in the middle of crazy times, I only do it once a month. Just a short little summary and send it off. And what we both found was in that process of writing each other, it made us focus on our goals again. Because all of a sudden, what happens to most people is you write your goals down, you put them somewhere, and never think about them again. But if you're writing a summary to your friend every couple of weeks, you'll think about them. And you'll think about them all year long. Now, I'd love to tell you that I was just so smart, I thought the system up and did it. Nope, not at all. No, no credit for this. It was a total accident. And yet it has been one of the best things for both Matt and I. Because we have this ongoing relationship where we're encouraging each other. And when I get a win, I get to tell Matt about it. And he's excited for me. And when Matt gets a win, he tells me about it. And I'm excited for him. It is incredible the energy that comes when you bring someone into your goals, which is so biblical. You can't do it alone. Don't even try. Find somebody that you can bring into your goal setting. And it doesn't have to be, again, this, is, this takes me literally 10 minutes when I do this. So you're talking about 20 minutes a month to keep up with your goals. 20 minutes a month. 
That's not even the commercials that most people watch in one night of TV watching per month. Just do it during the commercials. That's all you need to do. When you watch TV, a commercial comes on, type a little summary of your goals and send it off. But here's the real value of everything I'm just saying. To get where we don't want to be, from where we don't want to be to where we do want to be, it requires two things. You've got to change direction, right? So if you're going to Minneapolis, but you want to go to Chicago, you better turn around. Some of us, no, all of us need to turn around in some area of our life. There's no perfect person I'm talking to today. None. All of us. And then the second thing you need is time, right? Just because you turned around when you got to Minneapolis, do you instantly arrive in Chicago? Nope. You need to get going in the right direction and then you need time. And this is the most wonderful truth that I've learned in the last few years. I talk about it every January because this is just a game changer if you get this. You know what time brought me in 2020 once I got on the right path? This is the secret. Just get on the right path. Then time happens, right? Did 12 months just pass? Yep, 12 months just passed. Time just happens. You don't have to do anything with time. Get on the right path, and then all of a sudden, time starts working for you. Here's what happened to me because I got on the right path in 2020. Time brought me debt freedom. I just elevated my debt payments, and then time kept going by. And time kept paying off my debt because I just locked it in, and I had it automatically set up so that time, time passed, and time kept making those payments for me. Time brought... 2020 brought me debt freedom. It brought me a fully funded emergency fund because once I wasn't paying all that money into debt, I could put it into an emergency fund. So if my transmission dies on the way home, I'll have a little emergency and I emotionally will be very, very, very upset about it because I'll have to tap my emergency fund and I don't like to ever tap my emergency fund, but that's just the reality. But I won't have an emergency because I got that. And time brought me 27 college credits in, in 2020. Time brought me all of that. And so much more that was on my goals. Do you want to know what time will bring me in 2021? Because I'm on the path. I'm on these paths in my life. So in 2021, time will bring me this happiness. Time's bringing me that. Because I'm on the path right now. So, Lord willing, next November, my school is an online school in Amberton, Texas. I am flying to Amberton. And I am going to walk across the stage. I don't care if everyone's got masks on and nobody's there. Somebody is handing me that piece of paper. Because it's been since 1988 I've been going after this dumb thing. And when you try and transfer college classes in, they don't take half of them. I had to start over as a sophomore. That's called stupid tax. Just finish it. I should have just finished it. It doesn't matter. That's what 2021 is bringing me. Lord willing, that's what it's bringing me. What's it going to bring you? What's 2021 going to bring you? It's going to bring you something guaranteed. I guarantee you it will bring you something. Will it bring you what you want? My daughter Rachel and I, <laughs> we talk all the time, and we were talking about this story. It's one of our favorite stories. We share this story with each other whenever we sense the other one needs to hear it. When she was in college, her, 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 the start of her senior year, she was so discouraged, she just wanted to quit. She just wanted to quit so bad, she almost did. I had to talk her out of quitting, her, her, the start of her senior year. Dad's mistake, right? So the story that I use to help her is the story that I really want you to have in your mind when you leave today. Dr. Henry Cloud, years ago, had a woman come to him, and she was a young woman, and she was so discouraged, she, she just hated her job. Like some of you just hate your job. You just hate it. And she, he was talking to her, he said, well, if you could do anything, what would you do? And she said, when I was young, I always dreamed of being a lawyer. I've always wanted to be an attorney. I've dreamt about it. I love TV shows about it. I mean, this is what I've always wanted to do. And he said, well, what do you do now? And she said, I work in the loan industry. And she said, I just hate it. I love the people, but I hate my job. And he said, well, how long will it take you to, get, to become an attorney? She said, it's three years of college, full time. And he said, well... Do you plan to be alive three years from now? And she's like, well, she's young. She's like, well, I hope so. 
Okay, he said, then think about this. Three years is going to come, right? We all know that. Three years is going to come like that. Three years is going to come. So will three years happen and you're still in a job you absolutely hate? Or will three years come and you've paid the price to get on the right path and three years comes and you're now an attorney? Three years is coming. You don't have the option about whether or not time is coming. Will that time come and bring you what you want or more of what you hate? Do you get that? Your time is going to pass. You don't have a say about that unless you just go to be with Jesus. But for all of us who are still alive, 12 months is going to pass. I will be right back here, Lord willing, saying these same kind of ideas a year from now. What will the next 12 months bring you? What will bring you? Will it bring you more of what you want? Or will it bring you more of what you don't want? You are on paths today. So what I'm saying basically is make time your ally. It's, what, it's just what God would say. Get on the right path. Get on a path that's going to bring you what you want. Because then time works in your favor. Get on the right path and time will pass and time will bring you what you want. So what habits do you need to change? Some of you know it's time to take responsibility because you're on the wrong path with your marriage. You know that. Your marriage is not turning out like you wanted it to. You're on the wrong path. Some of you know you're on the wrong path with your soul. You don't feel anything toward God. Nothing. You know you're on the wrong path. You know you're on the wrong path financially. There's so much stress and so much anxiety, or emotionally, like me. Some of you know that you are not emotionally healthy. Own it, take responsibility, and make it your goal to let time start bringing you the things you want. Get on a new path. For some of you just exploring God, either here with us or online, Jesus actually used a different word in the New Testament. He used the word road. Same concept though, right? Road and a path. Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 13, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And one of the scariest lines in the Bible, Jesus said, And many enter through it. Did you know that? Jesus said that. He said there's a path. It's really wide. And the majority of people are on this path, and it will bring them something they don't want, spiritually. Now that's harsh for Americans. We're just like, no, God is love, everybody's good, nobody's in trouble. And Jesus didn't say that. There are right paths and wrong paths in every area of our life, but not spiritually. Jesus didn't say that. He said the opposite. He said, there's a right path spiritually, and there are paths that will bring you something you don't want spiritually. And Jesus said, the reason people are on this wrong path is because of the nature of God. The Bible teaches that God is love. Pure love, never been unloving. And Jesus said, if you want to be with my Father in heaven, you have to be like him. Perfect. And we ignore that sentence. We round it to be, well, you just kind of got to be kind of good. Once in a while, and that'll be enough for God. Jesus never said that. He said, be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. And if you're not, you're on the wrong path. Now, the cool thing about Jesus is he literally does all the work to take us, pick us off the wrong path, and put us on the new path. He does all of it. That's why he came 2,000 years ago. He can't stand this. He cannot stand it. You are so loved by him that he literally laid down his life for you. There is nothing he would not do for you. You matter that much to him. He cannot stand it. And so what the Bible says was happening when he died on the cross is he was taking all of our unloving words and thoughts and behavior into his own body on the cross, paying in full. He died and then rose again, proving that he is God among us, and that if you will turn to him, he will completely forgive you, put you in his family, make you his son or daughter forever, and put you on a new path. 
You don't have to do it. He did it all. But if you'll let him, he'll give you this amazing gift. Let me have you bow your heads. Maybe this is the next step for you spiritually, is to let him give you this incredible gift with your head bowed. You could say something like this in your heart to him. Say, Jesus, I'm turning to you today. I don't want to think about being on the wrong road. And I know that I've been, done lots of unloving things in my life, so I need you. I need you to forgive me. I'm asking for your gift today, a forgiveness, and put me in your family. Put me on a new path with you spiritually so that I can experience your love and your guidance in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we finish up today, if you wouldn't mind taking the little card out of your program, even if you're a regular attender, I ask you to do this. Grab this card, and, and if you just prayed and either made that decision today or renewed your commitment, just check one of these boxes and let us know what you've done. If you're watching online and you've made that prayer today, just send us an email. My email is brianrudisell at gmail.com. You can send me a direct note, and we'll send you some follow-up stuff in the mail to help you take this next step on your new path with God. Thanks so much for coming. I hope you can come back as we go through some really exciting things from here about making your 2021 amazing with God. So thanks for coming.